Hello friends, so in this section we'll discuss the secretions of gastrointestinal tract. So we'll start with saliva. As we all know, saliva is produced by the salivary glands and in human body salivary glands can be of various types. So there are uh, they can be broadly classified into two categories. So we have major glands and minor glands. In major glands we have parotid parotid glands we have a pair of parotid glands we have submaxillary and submandibular submaxillary and sublingual submaxillary sublingual and we have some glands called as minor glands these include glands like one abner's glands one abner's glands okay now the glands which are responsible for maximum secretion these are the submaxillary glands they are responsible for almost 70 percent of the secretion of uh, the total saliva and parotid glands they contribute about 20 percent to the total secretion and sublingual contribute about 10 percent so these are different types of salivary glands and these are all paired glands and we have minor glands like von abner's glands now the daily production of saliva in humans is almost 1.5 liters per day and its ph is almost 7 so it's almost neutral ph now the composition of saliva and based on this composition we will try to understand different functions of saliva so there are certain enzymes which are present in saliva like we have salivary amylase also called as tylen tylen another enzyme present in saliva is called as lingual lipase lingual lipase and we have some enzymes like lac some substances like lactoferrin lysozyme and uh, apart from these there are some substances like secretory iga antibodies okay secretory iga antibodies now based on these um, enzymes and other substances saliva performs different functions like like salivary amylase or uh, tylen this is responsible for digestion of carbohydrates carbohydrates and lingual lipase as the name suggests is responsible for digestion of lipids okay now this lactoferrin and lysozyme both these substances are antibacterial substances antibacterials and this secretory iga it has a protective role now regulation of secretion so the amount of saliva that's produced is regulated by autonomic nervous system so daily production is almost 1.5 liters per day and this amount is regulated by autonomic nervous system so activation of autonomic nervous system is associated with increase in secretions of salivary glands so there will be more secretion of saliva okay so in autonomic nervous system there are two main components so we have the parasympathetic system and the sympathetic system activation of parasympathetic system is going to result in uh, so both these uh, components they are going to increase the secretions now parasympathetic secretion activation is going to induce thin and watery secretion thin and watery secretion and activation of sympathetic nervous system is going to induce thick secretion okay? Th secretion of thick saliva so now the for the secretion of saliva the impulses should come so the main impulses that cause secretion of saliva are the parasympathetic impulses and so th there should be activation of parasympathetic nervous system and the impulses should reach these glands for the secretion of saliva okay so for the parotid gland we have a uh, we have nerve supply which comes from a particular ganglion and for other two main glands that sub submandibular and sublingual glands 
the nerves up they have a different nerve supply okay so in both these cases first we have a nerve it finally reaches the ganglion which is a peripheral parasympathetic ganglion so we have a nerve which goes to a peripheral ganglion and the branches from that ganglion they actually supply the gland and then there is secretion secretion of saliva okay so in this case uh, in case of parotid gland the nerve which supplies is the ninth nerve or the glossopharyngeal nerve and it the branch of this glossopharyngeal nerve reaches the otic ganglion okay otic ganglion which is present below the foramen ovale and then the branches of otic ganglion finally supply the parotid gland which results in secretion of saliva okay and in case of sub submandibular and sublingual glands the nerve the uh, the supply comes from the seventh nerve so seventh nerve it reaches the peripheral ganglion which is called as the submandibular ganglion submandibular ganglion and the branches of the ganglion they supply the submandibular as well as the sublingual glands and this results in secretion of saliva okay so in case of parotid gland we have the glossopharyngeal nerve and in case of submandibular we have the seventh nerve in parotid otic ganglion and in case of submandibular we have the submandibular ganglion okay now submaxillary gland it's also called as submandibular gland okay this is also called as submandibular gland so this is all about the secretion of saliva produced by salivary glands so we have major glands minor glands then daily production composition and based on this composition uh, and there are different functions like uh, it performs function of digestion so there is digestion of carbohydrates lipids but there is no digestion of proteins okay saliva does not contain any enzyme which can cause digestion of protein so digestion of protein starts in the stomach whereas digestion of carbohydrates and lipids it starts in the in the mouth okay because of presence of these enzymes and lactoferrin and uh, lysozyme these have protective role they are antibacterials and apart from this there is presence of secretory iga so that's all about the saliva thank you